Hi, my name is Alan Bednar, and I'm here from Simply Hydroponics to give you a quick class on plant propagation, or also cuttings and clones. What we're going to need before we get started is a clear humidity dome, possibly an insert, we'll go into that in a minute, and obviously a small plastic tray. A good rooting hormone spray bottle with tap water in it, some alcohol for sterilization, scalpel, razor blade, or sharp pair of scissors for your cuttings. We're going to do a rock wool cube, we're also going to do rapid rooter cubes, and we're also going to do loose cocoa, and a strong healthy plant to take your cuttings from. Okay, okay to get started here, one of the ones we're going to do is loose cocoa. So we're going to take a little bit of loose cocoa, and fill just two or three, since we're only doing a few cuttings, of these inserts of the holes in a 72 tray insert. Then we're going to take a rapid rooter cube also. We're going to set it into the tray. And the rock wool cube has to be treated a little bit different. Our rock wool cube, we've mixed a little bit of pH adjusted water, about 5.5 pH. We're going to soak the cube for about 10 or 15 seconds in the water. While that's soaking, we have some other pH adjusted water. This is about 5.5 to 6, which we're going to wet down our rapid rooter cube and our cocoa. And we want to make sure they're saturated enough. That they're well hydrated. seconds we're going to pull our rock wool cube out. Now what we want to do is make sure we have a place for our cuttings to go into the growing medium. Normally you would use a little skewer, um, a poker, I'm going to use a pair of scissors, and I'm going to look at the depth of the growing medium and I only want my holes to go down about three quarters of the way into the growing medium. So I'm just going to kind of do that, hold my finger on it, and poke it once into the growing medium. And I'm going to do the same thing with my rapid rooter cube. I'm also going to do the same thing with my cocoa. So far we have our growing medium moistened with pH adjusted water. We have pushed a little skewer or poker down about three quarters of the way down through the medium. Only about three quarters so that it doesn't go all the way through the bottom. Now we're ready to take our cuttings and put them into there. First thing I like to do is take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, make sure I don't have any bad bacteria on my hand, anything that would transfer a disease. I'm going to use a scalpel today, so I'm putting a little bit on the scalpel. I'm also cleaning the lid from the alcohol, which is going to make a nice little cutting board to make sure I get a nice clean cut across the cuttings. Next thing we're going to do is take a little bit of our rooting hormone. We're using a gel today. Could be a liquid or a powder. Ideally, you don't want to stick your cuttings into the container that you're using unless you're going to use up that container. The chance of transferring a bad bacteria into here, pulling it out next time, going to take some cuttings, and they don't root, and that's usually the reason why. So to keep that from happening, I'm going to take a small amount of this and I'm just going to use the back of a shot glass today because we're only doing a couple cuttings. I'm going to put a little glob there. I'm going to seal this up. And that should go back into the refrigerator to give you the longest shelf life and keep anything from potentially growing in there. So we have our hormone ready. <clears throat> you want a nice, strong, healthy plant to take your cuttings off of. Nothing with the disease or any type of stress issues or the success rate of your cuttings will be greatly diminished. You should look for a stem diameter of between a quarter to an eighth of an inch across and anywhere from three to six inches long. This is a bush doesn't have real long branches for cuttings, but these are well within the three inch range. So I think that one right there will work perfect. We have a growing tip. We have a few leaves, which is what's going to be above our growing medium. And what you want under your growing medium are leaf inner nodes. The 
place on a stem where the leaf connects to the stem is called a leaf internode. Ideally, you should have one or two of those internodes going down into your growing medium. That's going to be potentially where most of the new roots are going to start. <coughs> so that cutting there, I'm going to take my scalpel and I'm going to trim several leaves off very close to the stem. Then I'm going to take my cap from my alcohol. I'm going to make a cut about a quarter inch below the bottom leaf inner node. Make a nice clean cut. Then I'm going to take that stem and I'm just going to put a small amount of rooting hormone on here. The idea isn't to see how much hormone you can get on the stem of the plant, but just a nice thin layer on there. The first one I'm going to do is in the coconut fiber. And coconut fiber doesn't have a really grippy texture. It's a very popular growing medium, probably the most popular in the world. I'm going to stick my cutting in there. And then I'm going to take my fingers and press the growing medium up tight to the stem of the plant so that we don't have an air pocket in between. And I'm going to go back and take another cutting. And I'm going to do exactly what we did to the previous one. I'm going to trim a couple of these leaves off tight to the stem. Take my cutting board here. Go about a quarter inch below my bottom leaf inner node. And make a nice clean cut trying not to put your fingers on those open wounds that can hesitate or retard your root development. There again, very thin layer of hormone on the stem of the plant, just to the depth that it will be going into the medium. The next one I'm going to do is a rapid rooter cube. Very spongy texture, and when I put this cutting into the hole, this product grips so well that I can now pick that cutting up by the stem and shake it and it will not fall off, so I don't need to worry about making tight stem contact. It is there already. So a little easier with those. Then I'm going to do one more cutting. Let me find a nice branch, maybe this one right here. Clean cut, quarter inch below the leaf inner node. This one we're going to put in rock wool. Always doing the same thing, thin film of rooting hormone. The rock wool cube is going to be similar to the cocoa where once we put it in there, we're going to want to get good stem contact, pushing gently with our fingers to make sure that medium is tight against the stem. Now those little cuttings are ready to go. I could do as many as I wanted at that point. The next week or two is probably the most important part of the care and maintenance of your cuttings. Ideally they're going to be in a tray. You have your dome. If these cuttings lose moisture out of their leaves before they can sprout roots to replace it with, they will just wilt. So keeping a very high humidity is a very important factor over the next couple weeks. So what I like to do is take our spray bottle. Give the cuttings a light misting. Also the inside of the dome. The dome is going to go on the tray. Now you need a lighting source. Plants that are propagating don't need anywhere near the intensity of light that the plant you're taking it off of would have required to grow. So what's very popular a lot of people will use a small fluorescent light strip. This is a two foot T5 fixture. And to keep this from having to be mounted or hanged from a surface, this company has designed plastic trays and domes. The dome has a groove or an insert in the top that's made ideally for this little T5 light fixture to sit right on top of. Now that light being on about 18 hours a day is about the perfect amount of light for those cuttings. Pulling the dome off two to three times a day, light misting of the dome and the cuttings is all that's required. 
they're not using much moisture out of the growing medium yet because they haven't sprouted any roots. So they probably don't need to be watered daily unless you're in an area with very low humidity. But what you want to do is keep track of the moisture, maybe touching it with your fingers. And you have to guesstimate when it's lost somewhere between a third to half of the moisture that those cubes should be rewatered again. For the first five to seven days, pH adjusted water is probably adequate and will do a very good job. Past the five to seven day mark, you probably want to go to the seedling strength formula on whatever fertilizer program you're using. And from that point on, using the seedling formula for maybe another week or so, usually in about 10 to 14 days on average, roots should be starting to poke out the sides of the rapid rooter cube or the rockwool cube. The ones in loose cocoa, a little more difficult to tell. You can lift that uh, insert up and look at the bottom and see if roots are coming out. You can also gently take the stem of that plant and just give it a really light, little gentle pull. And if there's roots there, you'll feel the resistance. So you'll know that roots have started to grow. That being done, in the last 22 years or so that we've been helping people garden, Cuttings seem to be one of those areas that cause most people a little bit of problems the first time or two. And I think the three things that seem to be the most common for people getting their cuttings started is trying to keep them in that very tight parameter. The most common things are too much light, not enough light, too warm or too cold, 75 to 80 degrees day and nighttime temperatures is about ideal or people over bathing them and keeping the plants way too wet. Maybe they're misting them four, five, six times a day and watering them more frequently than they need. Those are the three things that tend to cause most people the most amount of problems in getting their cutting started. You should have fully developed roots in 10 to 14 days and if it takes longer than 14 days for most plant varieties something is probably a little out of line. Thank you very much for watching our video on cuttings. Hopefully you learned a little bit from it. Visit us online at simplyhydro.com. There is also a section on the free plans. Ah, sorry. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for viewing our video on propagation. Hopefully you learned a few things from it. If you'd like some more information, visit us at simplyhydro.com. In the mini class section, there is a little more detailed pictures and instructions on doing propagation. Also, like us on Facebook. Get a chance at winning $100 a month in free store merchandise. And thank you very much and have a great day.